Hi guys and welcome back. Today is the first in a series dedicated to color theory and I wanted to revisit the assignments that I took when I took my color and design class back in college and that was one of the most beneficial things I have ever done for my art because it really helped me get an understanding of color theory and how to utilize it in my pieces. So we are going to start off diving in and redoing these assignments. So if you guys want to take part in this and do these assignments with me, I would love to see what you guys are up to. So please hashtag those Danica Sills color and I will absolutely check those out and see what you're up to. I think that'll be one of the funnest parts about these is watching all of us do similar themes and concepts as if they were assignments together. So today we are going to start off right with the nice basic color palette, which is the complementary color scheme. And I just want to show you guys some master painters that use complementary colors. These are some of my favorite paintings. So the first one is from Picasso and it's the old guitarist. Then we have Vermeer and that's the milkmaid. Then we also have another Vermeer and that's the girl with the pearl earring. And then lastly, we have one by Monet and that's Impression Sunset. And you can see here how gorgeous these two colors really pop off of each other. And this is actually basically the color palette that I'll be using. So let's go ahead and jump right into today's painting. Okay, so to get to this point, I just used a gray cold erase pencil to do a transfer of my sketch onto my final watercolor paper. And I don't usually do this, but sometimes I like to be able to just start inking and not have to worry about a light box or having the interference of the sketch coming through too much. Now I can just look entirely at the paper and what's happening right there. And with this cold erase pencil, it's actually really nice because it's not smudgy like graphite is. So it keeps the paper very clean and it's also very erasable. And I just use a kneaded eraser. So after I'm done inking it and I've let it completely dry, I'll go in and I'll very gently erase this marking off of it and it comes off 100% and because it is a kneaded eraser, it doesn't damage the watercolor paper. That is something you want to make sure of that you're careful with is what kind of eraser you're using on the paper because a lot of erasers will damage your watercolor paper. So yeah, definitely use a kneaded eraser if you have access to them. And the inking was one of my favorite parts. Uh, just like the last few pieces where I've really gotten into using colored inks, I I'm feeling really good about it. It feels like I'm being able to control the entirety of the look and the final result is much more in my hands. It's interesting that it's a step that I never really thought about or I've considered options, but it was not something that immediately jumped out to me as a shortcoming in the way that I work. And when I always use just black ink, it was very static and it did hold me back in a lot of ways. And I'm excited to finally be moving on from that point and to be able to choose what I'm doing with that. And I'm sure that there's still gonna be a lot of times where I go back and just use black ink, but there's a lot of times where using a, a colored ink is gonna be the correct option for me. But I had a lot of fun mixing the inks today and getting the right uh, color that I want for this one. I do have a set of Liquitex acrylic inks, I believe. I'll put a link down in the description and it's a great starter pack because it has the primary colors and black, white, and a sepia, I believe. And yeah, I just use those to mix together a color. The colors that came in that set are actually transparent. So what I did was I just mixed in some white to it and the white was very opaque. So it was interesting because it still had the same level of color, but it was opaque rather than being a transparent color. And it was just, I really enjoyed mixing them together and testing them out and getting it right. I loved that process a lot. I just used one of those cheap little paint containers that you can get at pretty much any craft store and I mix those together. So now I can use them going forward because I always end up mixing too much, but, but yeah, this is, this is really exciting to me, honestly, being able to move in this direction and get a good handle on how to create inks with the colors that I want. And putting down that first paint wash was incredibly satisfying. Having the colored inks and then having a similarly colored ink wash was just, well, watercolor wash was really, really pleasant. I highly suggest if you have been feeling a little held back by the final outcome of your pieces, this might be a good step if you use it line work that is, but it was just, I cannot describe how incredibly like visually pleasant it was to watch, but I had a lot of fun painting him with very cold blue tones. It's 
always kind of a treat to be able to take a color that I'm not used to using in that particular way and experimenting with it. So for this one, since it was a blue and an orange color palette, I did want to make sure that there was variety in his skin color still, because that's what gives it life and interest. I ended up going with a little bit of a green hint for the shadows and for areas like the tops of the ears and the nose and the shoulders where there might be a little bit more blood circulation. So in a normal colored skin, you'll get where it's a little bit more of a warm red tone. I just pushed it a little bit warmer, but in the blue scale. So I think that actually worked out pretty nicely too, because it does mimic the, the yellow in the background where it's an orange color, having the green tip a little bit in that direction rather than purple just helps it to remain more harmonious. So that's a little bit of a trick is that if you want that color to have a similar color to the background like this, just tip it in that direction. So they have that same color base. One thing that I wish I had done better actually is that I wish that I pushed the shadows more on his face. I've been wanting to get more into having very dynamic shadows that are cast onto faces and skin like this. And I, I think this was a little bit of a missed opportunity. The shadows that I did put at the beginning, I was a little bit timid with them. So I blotted them out more and I tried to fade them out. And it, it could have used more contrast in his face. I think that the biggest issue is simply that I was working on his face first and then I did his hair after. And I did do some touch-ups on his face afterwards, but when I was doing the base of his face, it was compared to all white in the background. So it was hard to make sure that the values were where they needed to be. And that's, that's the thing that I think I could get better at is working on a piece a little bit more overall and building it up so that I can get the values correct for the whole piece rather than overworking one area or not working enough, but thinking it's done and then moving on to another. Cause I think if I'm able to be able to look at one area compared to another, I can get the values correct and get the colors correct. But that's uh, that's one thing that it just, depending on the piece, sometimes I do better at and sometimes other pieces I do worse at. But I think this one, I, I did focus a little bit too much on refining his face before I really got any basis for any other areas on this piece done. And then I finally got to putting down the wash for the background. This is one of the steps that I should have done a lot sooner into the process so I could make everything look the way I wanted to from the get go, like I mentioned. But this was a really pleasant wash to do. Some of them I find that for some reason I struggle a little bit more, but I think the shapes that defined the edges of the background were more simple than they usually are for me. So I was able to get much smoother of a wash than I normally have to struggle with to get through. So that can actually add a lot to being able to get a very smooth look depending on how intricate your edges are. So really the most complicated areas were his, his hair and that was very easy to go in with a thin brush and just pull the paint in and fill those areas in. So that is a big thing when you're working on getting very smooth flat washes is just beginning to pay attention to the shapes and the edges that you have to fill in. If it's a very, very complex and you have to get in a lot of little crevices and then you have to go back to other areas, I sometimes will use Miskit just to block that area off. And that way I can get a very smooth wash. But this one, since it's so small and pretty simple, I was able to get a surprisingly smooth wash pretty quickly and easily. And then I decided to actually leave the smoke effect white and then gray. And while I was painting this, I was debating whether I wanted it to be a yellow orange effect. If that was going to be the thing that matched his eyes, but ultimately went with the orange in the background. And then this was going to be white with a gray border. I really just, when I was looking at it, I liked the stark contrast of it compared to the two colors and being able to look at it that way, pretty much through the whole painting process. I was pretty convinced that I liked that effect. I actually went in and mixed a gray ink for the outlines, but I used a brush that was just a little bit too thick. So there are areas where the border on that smoke effect was overpowering what I wanted it to look like. I wanted it to be a little bit more delicate and flowing. So I ended up going in with my white gouache and blocking in pretty much all the white area again and just cutting into some of that ink work so that it does have a little bit more of a slim line effect. And I actually really love using white gouache in my watercolor arsenal. If you notice every once in a while, I'll pull it out when I'm using it, but it is a huge tube of paint now because I used up all of my other white gouache, but it's surprising how many uses I've found in my paintings. I 
100% prefer it for any highlights that I want in a piece because it is water soluble. So it is way better fitted for the subject matter and for all the media that's happening below at the watercolors than say a white ink that's permanent. There have been many times where I put down my gouache and then have been able to use water and clean it up to the way that I wanted it to. And just that that nice marriage between the watercolors and the gouache just really work well together. So I actually really recommend getting some white gouache and seeing how you like incorporating it into your watercolors and being able to use them for effects and for highlights and even mixing a little bit of watercolor paint into them to tint them. But yeah, it's a, it's a tool that I've really grown to love and to need with my watercolor paintings. And that is it for today's complimentary color palette for this painting. So if you'd like to take part in that and also do a complimentary color piece, or if you've done one recently and you'd like to show me, please hashtag it, hashtag Danica Sills color. And I'd love to take a look at it. And as always, I do have the original available. So if you'd like to own this little painting, I have him available at my shop and there's a link down in the description as well as in the end card that'll happen in just a second. And I do have free shipping for all orders, US 35 and over and international $75 and over. And I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. So I'll See you guys at my next video.